By 1976, Polish jazz keyboardist Wladek Golgowski was a 12-year veteran of the music scene internationally when he dropped the Polydor release Soundcheck, recorded with an array of electronic and electric instruments and the drumming of Steve Gadd and the bass of Anthony Jackson, and from that album, the title track. Well, already the rhythm section that I introduced is cooking up quite a bit of heat and intensity here. The, uh, already you can tell one of the more expressionistic uh, credits of Steve of dr drummer Steve Gadd's very uh, decorated 70s career. <laughs> the same year that Steve Gadd recorded that album uh, stuff kind of an anonymous like um, LA session jazz funk release <laughs> Anthony Jackson's bass figure here, the way it's just kind of like walking around in twos, like doom, do doom, do doom, do doom. Boom, 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 boom. Amid that really persistent hi hat. It's like four triple hits on the hi-hat per bar or something. And thus far, Golgowski had been giving us just like light fender, and now he's giving us like some moog, some really rising moog. And uh, amid that move, there was also like this sustain, this kind of luminous sustain. Um, he's got quite an arsenal here. Piano, Fender and Honer electric piano, um, Logan, Stringer, and Mini Moog synthesizer, um, Chinese chimes. Oh, and also they say that he plays a Celesta Synthi Axe synthesizer. I don't know about that instrument being around this early. Um, when I when, when I do a Google on Celesta syntax, I get like this really 80s looking, uh, well, you can you can look it up. But um, yeah, this was recorded January 12th to 17th, 1976. So right near the start of the year. So something that definitely could have been uh, a soundtrack for much of the year out there and available. <laughs> Oh, by the way, um, I have no idea who's giving us that crickety wah-wah because there's no, well, there's no guitar uh, listed in the credits. Or it's some other instrument that's doing it. It's, it's I guess it's one of Golgowski's instruments that's maybe doing that. But, uh... Um, sounds offhand the Logan Stringer makes. Uh, yeah, leave a comment if you can pinpoint where in the song, like you're hearing the Logan Stringer versus the Mini Moog uh, versus the Celesta Synthiax. That is, if all three are used on this track. <laughs> Steve 
Gad is just bombarding the rhythmic figure here. <laughs> Oh, that was great. I love that. That like sparkle, it's like sequins in the light. Yeah, sequins under the strobe light. Um, Steve Gadd's like like drum beats ha have a real like deepness to them, a real. It's a, it, it, it seems to be like a lot of kick drum amid the like hi hat and cymbals. Oh, that piercing tone. Oh, the harmonic convergence right around here is it, it lands in this chord. Now that sound is just kind of struggling to be heard. It's almost like being kind of restrained. It's... Sounds like it's being choked. It's more like a splatter effect than an actual sound. Yeah, that, uh, Another one of the many reasons to uh, admire Steve Gadd as a drummer, um, especially um, if you're only if you're primarily familiar with him as a pop drummer, he he can really just pulverize and and cr create these like uh, the, these just no escape. There there was just like no escape from that that drumming of his. I mean between that that. Those downbeats, those persistent like downbeats, and, and just the the spray of that of that metal, yeah, and um, and of course our, our main guy here, Golgowski, just uh, rising to the surface and just splashing right out of the water with uh, one analog sound after another. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of sound created by just. Apparently by just three people. Yeah, the three that I've introduced already. Um, recorded in Stockholm. Yeah, so so everyone kind of came out of their comfort zone for this one. Maybe maybe that explains some of the, the abandon. Like, a few people maybe kind of a, a little bit out of character here. It's like you're, you're in a foreign land. Um, just... Uh, you know, escape from your straitjacket, you know, try something different, you know. Forget for a minute that you you are who you are. Forget that you're Steve Gadd for a minute and, and just try to be a more expressionistic, avant-garde type drummer. Yeah, the album Sound Check, the title track from that album. Let's hear another track from the album. Taking a funkier turn, here is the track Manhattan Vibes. <laughs> Yeah. 
Okay, that intro was quite a big splash, quite a phantasmagoria of spinning lights and such. <laughs> And now we're going into kind of like a constipated duck type groove, a uh, reference to Jeff Beck, of course. Hear that, that flexiton, that, that, yeah, I love all these like squirting analog sounds and that like funky rhythm. And uh, Anthony Jackson's bass is really delectable. I mean, you may not, you may just kind of feel it more than it, it may just be kind of like filling out the sound, giving it kind of like a depth and a fullness. But if you pay attention to where he's dropping the notes, it really uh, is key to the kind of funky drive of this. Or the funky strut, I should say. The... I basically, I guess, uh, let's see, Golgowski's doing two sounds, or kind of like alternating between two sounds. He's doing that kind of like wah wah y type sound, and then that piercing uh, moog sound. <laughs> I almost wanted to say ARP because it's 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 much more tweaky. God, hear uh, like Gad just roll it. It's like Anthony Jackson is just kind of like uh, climbing up and then stepping down like over and over again and just uh, Golgowski is just kind of like trying to uh, like flank him at every every step of the way. I, I would imagine that the rhythm section, take it, consider the title for a minute, Manhattan Vibes. The Rhythmic, Gad and, and Jackson are basically pacing the strut, like walking down the streets of Manhattan circa 1976, and the sounds that Golgowski is just coloring and oozing and, you know, wiggling about, those are the vibes, per se, like various impressions of, like, light, of sights, of windows, of you know, of the grime, of the, you know, the reflection of light on the puddles, you know. I'm thinking this is like at nighttime. I'm getting kind of a dark, kind of like a late night Manhattan vibe. You know, of sound, of like passing cars, of like people shouting, of people this and that. Just all the colorful things you would see in 70s era Manhattan, like, a, or as, a, you know, a, as indicated like in the film uh, Taxi Driver. Yeah. You know the one of the the main uh, one of the definitive movies of that year. Um, yeah, you'll you'll see every, all all kinds of people. You'll see the street walkers. You'll see the you know bums. You'll see the musicians. You'll see the freaks. You'll see yeah all, all kinds. <laughs> God, 
God, just the sounds are, are just like so many. If, 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 if these could be uh, re representative of creatures, I'm thinking like worms. I'm thinking, I'm thinking of all kinds of like... Heck, I'm thinking of like critters out of like a Kenny Scharf painting. Heck, I wonder how those types of solos are written out in notation. The, not this part. This, this part now. Now this part could could easily be written as sheet music, but but the last part we just heard those, yeah. <laughs> If this is one of Steve Gadd's favorite uh, credits from this time period. Hit that. What? 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 I wonder if um, they recorded this um, at the same time in the studio, or if they were each recording their parts separately. Because some of the and then painstakingly put together. Because um, sometimes I, when, when I pay I spend time paying attention to each instrument in a track like this. I'm thinking, how could, like, say Anthony Jackson concentrate on his line with all this going on, and you know. <laughs> Because part of the complexity is that at times they're kind of like in lockstep with each other and at other times they're almost kind of like sounding kind of discombobulated, like, like you're hearing two, maybe three songs going on at once for maybe a couple of seconds and then they kind of just realign and, you know, they, it's, it, the paths just keep on going like... like <laughs> This should have been this that part right there anyway like or that and and this could could easily have been in uh like a documentary or some kind of or maybe not necessarily like a, the sequence in a cop show but maybe the sequence like in a strutting through town uh in, in like a movie or in a tv show from the era that grainy super 8 footage <laughs> Heck, I could imagine, when I think of, like, straying around Manhattan during this, or straying around New York, well, okay, maybe I should say uh, Brooklyn. You know, when I think of strutting in that era down the streets, I, I can't help but think of You Know Who from a certain movie that came out the following year that, that, where, where that begins with him strutting, begins at his feet, and then pans up. <laughs> Avalanche. Pulverizing. Oh, like, like, like crash landing and now just everything is, all the elements are just kind of kicking up and landing 
in an assortment of oh that sustain sound that come, came up toward the end and almost like a blue shining light yeah Wladek <clears throat> Golgowski with the song Manhattan Vibes from his 1976 album Soundcheck, released on Polydor, and before that, the title track from the album, recorded in Sweden at the start of 1976 with ubiquitous LA session drummer Steve Gadd and bassist Anthony Jackson. Yes, a uh, Polish talent who around this time was one of several uh, Polish jazz musicians who was conquering the great wide world, along with um, several expats like uh, Michael Urbaniak and his wife Ur Ursula Dudziak. And um, yeah, and th there would be more in the years ahead. And uh, yeah, because the. Uh, Poland um, was was one of the most uh, fruitful Eastern Bloc countries around this time. Like uh, um, violinist um, Zygmio Seifert was also breaking through in the West, having I think um, expatriated like about two years before, put out his first album that same year. Now the light, but that's a segment for a future for an upcoming. Uh, installment in this uh, 76 of 76 marathon. Yes, anyway, for more rubies and sapphires from the um, Wladek Golgowski album Soundcheck, see the directory of albums by Polish artists linked in the description below for Red Hot Tracks and Purples from this album and many other Polish artists, including the ones I just mentioned, as well as other artists from the former Eastern Bloc, because it's actually like a a 600 some odd directory of albums from the um, early 70s to the mid 80s of the then Eastern Bloc of all the nations behind the Iron Curtain. Yeah. Like and subscribe, follow me on social media, and leave a comment if there are any observations you have about the two tracks we just heard. Um, yeah, the funky Manhattan vibes and the more blazing, speedy sound check. And, you know, the layers, the nuances, the solos, who, which sound was the best, which rhythmic moment, which break was the best. Yeah, if you can uh, pinpoint each particular make and model when you heard it in a given song, yeah, uh, more credit to you there. And until next time, this is Aragon, the world's most ear-troubled trimaximalist, signing off.